Have you ever wondered how to stretch your supplies to create your own acrylic paint? Well, today you're gonna learn how to take simple pigments that you probably already have and mix them with mediums to use on stencil cards, art journals, mixed media, and you can even paint your own scene inspired by Monet's water lilies. Hi. I'm Ingrid Blackburn, and this channel is all about exploring techniques to make the most of your supplies. Be sure to stay tuned to the end, as this video is cram-packed with tips and projects showcasing some fun techniques. Let's dive right in! So to get started, we are going to need the proper backdrop for our project. I'm using regular cardstock here for a couple cards that have been pre-treated with some gesso. And we're going to use some gelatos as our pigment sticks. I've got three colors, snow cone, bubble gum, and lemon. And gelatos are super highly concentrated pigment sticks uh, made by Faber-Castell. Uh, they're wonderful to work with. You can work with them just as they are, kind of looking like a lipstick or a crayon. But here I'm going to sh actually shave off some of the pigment. You can use whatever pigment you want. If you want to use ink refills to color your mediums, that's totally fine too. Whatever you have that's going to give you a smooth consistency in order to mix in. Now you can see here I'm taking some gel medium. I'm using matte medium. There's also different types. The one that was on the right there, that was actually some semi-gloss medium. There's also gloss medium. The key is to have that smooth texture when you're going to mix this together. You're gonna really work it together. This is, I sped this up right here and I'm gonna actually show this a little bit better in a kind of a done a little differently when we move on to the next color so that you have a couple ways of doing this. You can see that color's not really quite, uh, you know, pigmented enough. It's not deep enough in value. So I'm adding a little bit more pigment to get a little bit of a richer pink, really working it in with a palette knife. I'm doing this on cardboard, but I ended up doing the rest of them all on my craft mat because the cardboard, as you can see, it kind of absorbs some of the liquid. It's important when you're going from one color to another that you also very thoroughly clean off your palette knife also before going into any medium as well because you don't want to tint the entire jar so here we're going to take some of the lemon and we're just going to shave this off and then i'm going to actually move it over to the craft mat so to get a really great consistency i'm going to spritz a little bit of water after smushing it down, getting it into a paste consistency, and I'm utilizing the water to really get a very smooth blend here. Just, you can see it's very grainy there, but you wanna continue to mix it until it's a nice, smooth consistency. And then at that point, that's when you wanna go ahead and add your medium. And since we're using the matte medium, you also want to be aware that you don't ever wanna add more than 25% water or liquid to that because then it'll become too thin and you won't really be able to work with it as intended. So you can see here, you're just really getting that mixed really well and this is gonna be a very nice fluid gel medium to work with on our projects. So you can see we've got the three colors. I did the other one off screen. We have the bubble gum, lemon, and snow cone. All three have a nice consistency. And now it's time to have some fun. So instead of using the white for this project, we're gonna use one that I've already pre-colored with gelatos. This is a really nice textured gelato background. Use gesso on the paper. I'm gonna link up here in the upper right and below in the description section to a video that shows you lots of projects and how I made that exact one. We're using some paper stencils by Faber-Castell. Love these paper stencils packs and some palette knives. It's always good to have different sizes of palette knives. Um, this is, you know, a six by six stencil, so it's not overly huge. So I have, I think this stencil, uh, this palette knife is like two inches long. Not very big. It actually might only be one inch. So I'm starting off with some of the lemon paint and you can see here it's spreading really smooth and easily, has a really nice consistency. I am gonna zoom in and show you the bubble gum and then speed up the rest for you uh, because you're getting the gist here. But just to kind of show you something not to do. So be sure to stay tuned here. You can see we're gonna grab the bubble gum here and you can see that I did not fully get that blended. I had little specks of pigment that were not blended out well and you can see them in the actual paint there. Now is that the end of the world? No. 
Not at all. It's not the end of the world. But, you know, I mean, if I was really trying to get some real smooth consistency, that probably wouldn't be desired. Notice I am cleaning off my palette knife in between. And then here's the snow cone, which was blended out really nicely. Now, the nice part about, you know, making these paints yourself is you can mix and create new colors as well. You can see when the snow cone mixes with the bubble gum, it creates a really pretty purple. We're going to get an orange right here um, in this next little spot because we're going to have a little bit of yellow and pink blend together and it creates a really pretty orange uh, hue. And, you know, I kind of mixed it a little bit on the cardboard there ahead of time as well. And we're going to pull that off. We're going to pull it off as straight as possible and look at that. Great, beautiful um, look. I'm going to have some close-ups on those two projects in a second before moving on to the next. Here is also just a piece of watercolor paper. I did a little bit of coloring with some ink as well as gelatos in the background and just adding some of those colors over that through the wonky stencil by Katherine Pooler. Now here's what to do with what's left on the stencil. You know, and here's the rest of that scraped off. I can use that for something else. But I'm gonna take a piece of scrap paper here. I've got all that great color goodness on there. You don't wanna waste that. I'm just gonna invert that, just completely flip it over, add a piece of paper to the top here, and just kind of burnish the back. You don't wanna shift the stencil, but look at, you got something on that one piece and now on this one. And the one thing about paint is it becomes resistive uh, to other mediums or things that you might use to color. So that's a great base for a future project. So now that we have these amazing paints, let's go ahead and create something truly spectacular. Taking a gelato, light spritz of water onto that regular piece of cardstock that's been gessoed. And that's giving a real light backdrop for our painting. This is gonna be a little bit of a nod to Claude Monet. And we're gonna create a water lily scene. So taking some of that snow cone, beautiful paint, and just lightly with a paintbrush, just going across the paper. I don't need to be very specific, just kind of creating random little uh, kind of stripes or swipes across. I felt like we needed a little bit more of some contrast. It was I didn't want it to be all, you know, the same color. So adding a little bit of boysenberry there as well, just, you know, for a little, a little bit more. And we'll use that again in a few minutes uh, once we create some interesting new colors. So you can see here just real simple swipes. This is truly something that everybody can do. There's no right or wrong here. Just wanted to kind of fill this entire scene. Now if you would love to see this project in real time, please tell me in the comments. I would love to know that and I will definitely do this one project, the painting in real time. I felt like I needed now to do uh, some of the like lily pads, but that yellowish green that I had created with the yellow and the blue was a little too light. So we're adding a little bit of boysenberry in there and that's giving us the right shade. It's actually kind of a little bit more of a bluish green, but it's the perfect olive. I loved how it turned out. So just doing some very random swipes here, leaving a lot of that blue in between. And I wanted to add a little bit of li the light, lighter, like yellowish green kind of behind there because that kind of gives us some of those, you know, shadows and highlights that we see in the water. Not everything is always the same tone. And to get a little bit of, uh, a little bit more of a lighter color, you can always use water to water it down a little bit, but you don't want to do that too much. I'm adding some more of the blue in between there, and that's just helping to do the same thing in the water, just to create some variance and variety there. So now really cleaning off my brush there off screen, adding some clean water, and I'm gonna do exactly what I just said. I'm really watering down some of this olive green that we had created. And just going to add for a little bit of balance up top. And this would be, you know, what is perceived to be in the distance. So some lily pads that are really far away. I don't want them to be, you know, anything that, you know, you'll really focus in on, but yet gives a little bit more, as I said, balance to the project. So now that we have our lily pads and our water primarily done, I mixed up a little bit more of the bubblegum pink and I'm just adding some lilies, some pink lilies to the water. It has a nice little contrast. You can of course do white, you can do anything you really want, but this is an impressionistic painting. So, you know, it's really whatever I, I kind of wanted. And I'm really loving how this worked, uh, but I felt like the 
they needed to be elongated a little bit. And I know that that's not necessarily accurate. And I wasn't originally, I was kind of trying to make it look like a lily. And then I just decided, you know what, let's just make it look more on the impressionistic side. So now we're just kind of stretching it out a little bit, making little adjustments. The nice part about that, this is really forgiving. If you needed to make an adjustment, you could certainly pick something away with some water like you see me doing in certain spots and then just adding a little bit more paint. Very, very forgiving. So I think I had gotten a couple little flecks from my hand and little spots. Now I'm just kind of deepening up the water in certain areas using that boysenberry just to kind of add a little bit more shadow in certain areas and just have a little bit of contrast uh, throughout the painting. And this ended up being a card, but it could most certainly just be matted and put into a frame. You could do this on canvas. Uh, this would be a great mixed media piece, also in an art journal, you know, whatever it is that you're uh, wanting to do with it but I absolutely love how this turned out. And this is by far going to be my mother's birthday card <laughs> next year. It was so pretty. I ended up turning it into a card, as you can see here. You can get these up close visuals of the strokes there. I love the texture that the gesso underneath on the cardstock provided. Look at those little white marks. That's from the gesso being used with a paintbrush. And, you know, I, it didn't need a greeting. So I felt like, you know, I'll just throw something on the inside. I really hope that you enjoyed learning how to mix up some paint. If you want to learn more uh, techniques that you can do with gelatos, be sure to click that video there on the left. And uh, I will see you over there. Bye.